Okay, so I suppose you have already watched this video on the playlist. So for now, what you can do is you can go to the worksheet and you can basically finish page 21 and page 22 as well. So pause the video now and do all of them. A few moments later. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is to identify the actual force that acting as the centripetal force in the cases above. So in one, I mean in A, that is the tension, uh, similar to the one that you find in the video earlier. B is the car making a turn and that is uh, using the friction. So once again, without friction, then the car will just slide through it like this. It's very snowy and the friction is very limited and it's very hard to stop as well, not to mention making a turn. And yes, it hits. And not the first time. So there is something called the chain where you can add to the wheel, by the way, just an extra information, uh, physics knowledge for you to increase the grip and in fact uh, to increase the friction and that's the second hit actually the third i think anyway c the roller coaster so this one is a bit tricky uh, the force that you need is actually the reaction force so uh, let me just put it down here the reaction force is um you can imagine if you are talking about the passenger then when you are on the roller coaster you need to put on the strap right uh, or whatever thing that you to secure the harness to secure uh, your body otherwise you got flown out of the cart simply so when you are on this you find oh it's kind of painful i mean if you really go for really uh, quick moving um, roller coaster and that is because the force is acting onto your shoulder and that is in in this case in uh, this diagram then that will be pointing downward towards the center of the circle and talking about the cart itself, uh, then it will be something to do with the wheel, how it's locked uh, to the track. And that's also reaction force. Example D, and that is uh, the sun and the earth, and that is exactly what we learned earlier. And that's uh, what we call gravitational force. Uh, you, you may call it weight, uh, although it doesn't sound very good, because weight usually we refer to it as the gravitational force near the uh, planet surface. Uh, gravitational force is just a more, I would say, a proper word than here. Uh, never put down gravity. Once again, gravity is just a phenomena, not a force itself. Okay, next, talking about the direction. Remember, force is a factor, velocity is also a factor, so they must have direction. The direction of the centripetal force is always pointing towards center. And that's why it's called centripetal, because this is uh, the meaning of this word. It means seeking the center. Direction of the velocity will be tangential. Am I spelling it correctly? No. Ten tangent, right? Tangential to the circle. Okay, so for example, um, like... Earth, or actually this is not very good arrow. I would say the arrow should be like this, right? This is more like that. Like why would they offset this? Uh, I don't know why. Uh, while for say uh, example A, if it is swinging like this direction, okay, because you, you need to know which direction it's going, then the velocity, uh, you can also draw on your diagram as well, is going to be like this, right? If it goes the other way around, then the velocity will be like this instead. Okay, so let's just draw this one, uh, not to confuse you. Uh, here, this this is not good, to be honest. Um, you shouldn't draw an arrow. I mean, if this is velocity, then this is bad. Or I assume this is nothing. So if you want to draw the velocity, this is a velocity that you need to draw. Let's think about circular motion again from a more fundamental perspective. Let's start with Newton's second law, F equals to ma. Think about this. Earlier, we talked about there are different forces that act as centripetal force. And that means force is non-zero because there's already a force. And according to 
f equals to ma in this case, then a must not be zero, obviously. And since a equals to dv over dt, using differentiation, or if you don't know about this, delta v over delta t, change of velocity over change of time, then if a is non-zero, then that means the delta t is also non-zero. And speaking of velocity is a vector, it consists of direction and magnitude. However, when you try to think about the circular motion that we talk about, uh, quite some of them are uniform. And that means the speed that they are revolving around you know, the center is constant. For example, uh, Earth will, will actually be orbiting around the sun uh, with a uniform speed. Actually, not exactly, but it's okay since we're in IGCSE. Let's treat it as a constant for now. And so if the speed is not changing, that means the magnitude of the velocity is not changing. And therefore, the only thing that got changed is simply the direction. And that's why uh, from the simulation or from the um, animation earlier, you see the direction, the arrow of the velocity will be changing all the time. And next will be the simulation, which in fact I have already shown you in the previous video. If you haven't tried it, you should pause the video now and try it first. And so what you find out eventually should be uh, once you switch off the gravity, then the Earth will simply go straight according to the velocity that it has uh, instant before you switch it off. So uh, your observation could simply be um, the Earth will go straight with the direction of velocity that it has before switching off the gravity. So like in this diagram, then what you will see is the, the Earth here will simply go straight like this, all right, forever, because there's no gravity. And so the explanation could be saying that, first of all, uh, f equals to zero. I mean, you can change it to worse. Of course, that would be the best. But the idea is, since force equals to zero, and according to f equals to ma, then a equals to zero by f equals to ma, and therefore, actually similar to what we deduced earlier, delta v equals to zero, right? That is by a equals to delta v over delta t. And so there is no change in velocity, including magnitude and also direction. That's why it keeps going straight. And in fact, this is Newton's first law. Okay, so in IGCSE for circular motion, we just have to understand the qualitative idea. So there's no calculation involved. If you are really interested in the calculation, uh, you should go and study either physics. To illustrate you what can be asked in IGCSE exam, here is a sample of the past paper question. Pause the video and try it now. A few moments later. Okay, so obviously this is about a circular motion and uh, it's going in this direction. Okay, and the first question is asking you the force acting on the string on the object at A and at B. So I guess you just have to draw the forces. I think you have weight and tension. Yeah, so I don't know which which one. Oh, force of the string, so just tension. Okay, never mind. Um, tension is always along the string. So A would then be like this. Okay, and for B, it's going to be like this. Okay, I think this is good enough. If you want to be even more clear, then what you can do is uh, label them. So this should be uh, one, this should be two. I think I think it's okay for this one. Uh, on the path of the object would take until it hit the ground if the string broke. Oh, okay. So at A, if it broke, then uh, think about this, since it's going in the anti-clockwise direction, right? So then um, the velocity, you could imagine, okay, don't draw this because they ask you to draw the path, not velocity. So this is something that you need to be more careful. But for the velocity, for primarily idea, velocity is like this, and this velocity is like this, right? At A and at B. However, you don't just draw like the ball at A going horizontally like this. 
right? I mean, if you just launch a ball, you know, simply, you know, try to launch, like try to, uh, I don't know, like a pistol or whatever, like a basketball, you push it, it doesn't go straight horizontal like this, right? How it goes is actually going like this, right? In a projectile motion, we call. And so eventually you will reach the ground. And for B, is more straightforward because it's already going down, like perfectly straight. And so the path is simply going straight. Okay, and I think we need, I don't know, the path I think is fine. If you like to add the arrow, I think it's okay too. It's not, it's not a factor anyway. Oh, and, and that's all for the question. So um, yeah, these are the answers basically. So in this video, you learn about circular motion and again, Centripetal force is a force that pointing towards the center, but it's not really a force. It's just a row of the force. And the forces can be, you know, of different things like tension, gravitational force, etc., depending on the scenario. The velocity is pointing tangential to the circle. And yeah, that, that's what we have learned so far in circular motion. Next time when you go to Ocean Park or other theme park, when you try a ride like this one, Try to think about circular motion and think about what are the forces that maintaining the circular motion. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.